My motherfucking law gun. Might win your case, might choke your ass. Don't come around here short with my motherfucking money. I ain't tell your ass to commit no motherfucking crime. Don't get your shit together now. I don't care your kids ain't eight, your mama motherfucking going blind, or your bitch ain't got no tampons. Better have my motherfucking money when this goddamn case starts. This week's episode of Log Owns Podcast is brought to you by Re-Repo Recovery Services. 2020 has come to an end and you fucked up all that scamming money. Unemployment fraud money went to Gucci, payroll loans went to Louie, and SBA loans were spent on trips to Atlanta and Miami. Now your ass is up here trying to figure out what to do about your repo car. Re-Repo Recovery Services has you covered. Simply let them know where your repossessed vehicle is located and they'll recover it for you within 24 hours. They will not guarantee the condition of the vehicle or assume any liability for the legal ramifications you may face. They'll simply get your shit back. Call them today because their services are cheaper than actually paying your car note. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Logoons Podcast. This week, we're going to interview Taylor. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Taylor. Um, Taylor Jones, to be exact. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Well, I had to reach out to you because um, you were on the list of people I had emailed and a few of the other young ladies I emailed, you know, of course they were like, well, who else are you trying to interview? So I told them some of the other people I had interviewed, you know, in case it was just something they didn't want to be involved with. So when I mentioned mm-hmm. your name to the first young lady, she was like, oh, no, nah, you interview her, don't interview me. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> So I talked to another person. I don't know if that should be good or bad. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's some personal beef, you know. But I didn't. Mm-hmm. You didn't give me anything. Make me think you were an asshole. So I talked to a second person, and I mentioned your name again. They were like, Nah, she ain't gonna do the interview, you know. So, <laughs> so when you finally mm-hmm. hit me back, I was like, Well, damn, I got to do this interview. You know, I had two people tell me not to interview. I got to see what's up. Mm-hmm. So, um, how old are you? I am 32. You're 32? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. You look good for 32. You look good for any age. 30, 30, 32 is not old. Like 32 was. is considered old now. Like 25 is considered old the way it the world is, is going. Not, it is not. I still look younger than these girls. It's 21, 22. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay. Where are you from? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. And what do you dance? Um, I mostly travel, but um, the only club I work at in my city is Paradise. We're not currently open mm-hmm. due to the whole, you know, curfew and shit. Okay. But um, so I mostly do like a lot of bookings right now, uh, private venues, shit like that. So, you know. Okay. So how long have you been dancing? Oh, a long time. Um, <laughs> uh, shoot, my daughter's fourteen, so I want to say twelve years. I want to say. 12 years. Yeah, but it's like, um, you know, they always say like for dancers, um, I started late, you know, some girls dance and start dancing when they're like 18, 19. 15. Um, yeah, I, sh- shit, it's a girl I knew was dancing when she was 16. Well, I started when I was 21. 20. Okay. So, you know, it's a little, a little different. So people feel like... <laughs> You know, I've been in it for so long, but shit, I know girls in their 40s still dancing. Will not be me, but. <laughs> uh, you know, it's funny because I know a 40 year old dancer and she just had a grandchild. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah. her son is 18 and 19. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a little different. Like, man, like, like, do the, like, does he know what you do? <laughs> right. Well, and see, I think everybody is different as far as the age thing. I don't think you should put a limit on who can be a dancer like in your 20s you still figuring out yourself you know mm-hmm. knowing what you know getting more mature knowing you know how to find your way I think once you hit 30 like you're you're a woman now like you you really own yourself your body your personality everything so shit do everything you want to do like as long as you got the body the looks you still making money go for it but I I will always say like you got to be doing something with it. Like I haven't just been in the club. Like I wasn't working in the club until Paradise opened because we didn't have no clubs out here. That was, I felt like able to accommodate me my because I travel so much. And you know that I felt like was at like that out of town level until they recently opened one. So you could not find me in my city dancing at all. I was always on the go. But 
that's why I say I, for me it's different because I'm doing something with my shit. I made a name for myself. I'm not just in the club, you know, 15, 12, 15, 20 years <laughs> swinging on the pole and I ain't, do, you know, got nothing to show for it. You know what I mean? So, so. Um, when it comes to longevity, do you believe in like the dancer should work out or learn how to work on the pole? So I learned the pole when I was younger. When I was smaller, I mm-hmm. learned the pole. <clears throat> so people book me still because they know, like, you know, hot, I'm shaped, you know, thick, a lot of ass. <laughs> but I do the pole work. I do pole work, too. I'm not just a let me stand there and make a twerk for you kind of dancer. I don't I don't even twerk. I'd rather dance to, like, seductive. I want to I wanna give you your money's worth is what, you know, I, the way I dance. But I, I definitely think it's worth it, like, like when you go out of town you see so much more and I just I just don't it it just kind of pisses me off how females just nowadays all they focus on just let me just get on the stage and shake my ass and that's mm-hmm. what people you know there for have some craft to it and art no so it's a performance pole dancing all in a it is you pole dancing they um what is it they be doing some of everything everybody do pole dancing now um I can't remember it's not a it's not a sport now but it's a it's the actual art form where these women, you know, professional women, like who don't even strip, you know, they do this. So, you know, I, why not invest in your craft? You want to do it, do it right. Okay. Um, now you said you started late as far as the age of like 21. Did you, did you see much competition or um, I want to say animosity when you came in at that age? Um. I really kept to myself. I didn't really mingle with a lot of girls. Like I know a lot of dancers, but even now, like you won't catch me hanging with strippers. I don't, they don't, they don't run in my circle. I don't run in their circles. Like that's not my life. Um, I literally leave that at the club, but um, I did get like a lot of hate because when I came in, like I, I posted, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I, I had posted, a, a, um, I had did like a question thing and somebody asked me to post me before my work or whatever I had asked before I got work done you know I had a I was an athlete I ran track I was a cheerleader so I had a body people just didn't you know niggas fuck with me females didn't because I was making money you know I just moved back to Ohio from college um I had a baby so like I was you know trying to be on my stuff at the moment I wouldn't care about nothing else (laughs) so two things you said before you had work mm mm-hmm uh, what do you mean by that? Like plastic surgery? So um, I had, uh, so once I had my daughter, um, nobody knew I was pregnant until I actually had her because I, I didn't show like for nothing. Um, but it showed everywhere else, hips, but thighs, that's where it showed. And I, I was a slim girl. I was an athlete. I was a track, had a track body. Mm-hmm. So I love that look on me. So when you ain't got no fat, what can you do? <laughs> you got to go do it the illegal way. <laughs> so I went and I had got, um, went to Atlanta and got injections in my hips. Um, and cause I wanted that spread like that, that, you know, hourglass figure. figure. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know what they fail to tell you when you go do stuff like that, of course, you, you never know where it'll go, where it'll stay. But I had a series of, um, sessions in my hips just to get that fullness. And of course, the stuff of travel so my ass looks big now I love the way my butt looks my body looks in general but as you get older and you know things happen of course that stuff grows with you too just like anything else Mm -hmm. so people think like I've had recent work done or whatever like that and I haven't I've never had lipo never had a BBL I just literally went and got injections in my hips and you know, the stuff didn't stay exactly where it was supposed to be. So I know a little bit did go to my butt, but not, I had an ass before, Mm -hmm. you know, everybody knew that about me. I had ass already, but um, I want to say four years ago, I got my um, boobs done. That was just a personal choice. I was debating it for a long time and just me and my best friend said, fuck it. Went to Miami and got our boobs done. (laughs) It was a group Um, date. (laughs) It Because I didn't want to go, we didn't want to go alone and Mm -hmm. It was something we both, you know, have, after having a kid, you know, I was, I was like a small B, maybe a small C. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, um, from me doing like bookings and like um, seeing all these girls out of town, like I was just like, I really, 
what the thing I think that really, really hit me on the head that I wanted my boobs done was because I, I love Vegas, my favorite place to go. Mm-hmm. I always stay at Caesar's Palace. You know, they got a topless pool there. Yeah. I just felt like, damn, I want to be like these girls. I <laughs> these nice looking, big boobs, you know. The flotation devices. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah so that's why I, I like it just really made me like you know the the freeness of that you know I hadn't seen that before like you know in a strip club you see it all the time but just like to be so open a regular woman whatever you do and you know in life that's what I was like so when I got them done and I, I love them like I, I still want the natural look I didn't want that put them up to my collarbone <laughs> type of look but yeah but uh, again never had lipo never had a bbl literally just had a, a couple of series of injections in my hips and to get that hourglass shape and i got my boots done everything was you know now when you got the injections were you worried because i've, I've dated a few women who got the injections mm-hmm. and it's like a um, it makes me a little paranoid just knowing they went to get them like what type of person were you dealing know- with yeah, and I think that's the thing too. Like, depend on you hear so many, and and like you said, you dated people, but you do hear so many stories about, mm-hmm. you know, what negative things was to happen, or whatever. The person who I went to, um, the first time I went, I actually went to Atlanta. It was a guy that did it, and he had did himself. He was doing everybody in Atlanta. So mm-hmm. this was a time when like the whole injection thing was still fairly new, new to people or whatever. Mm-hmm. But everybody was still doing it because it was so secret, secretive. Um, I found a forum um, just from doing like research. I research every day <laughs> and found a lady that, that was in my actual city to do mine. And um, like we had a long conversation. Like she was very sterile. She was a nurse. She was sterile. Like, you know, show me what she was putting in me. So I, you know, some people just go in and don't ask questions. There's no follow up on that. Just like, oh, just stick it in me and let's go. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But um, I've never had a... a I never had any complications from it, thank God. Like I even recently went to see a doctor in Houston and got a consultation because I thought about getting some of my butt, you know. Cut off. Not cut off because it's not pop. (laughs) Like, (laughs) but I didn't know if it was possible. And so um, when I had, when I had got my boobs done, my doctor, he was like, he was like, you have like the perfect shape, like, you know, whatever, like that. Um, I've been pregnant twice. So of course I spread, mm-hmm. I got bigger. So that's why I said people think like I went back and got work. No, I just was pregnant twice. I've had two miscarriages. So your ass and your thighs, you know, everything get bigger mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're pregnant. But um, I went to, you know, I went for a consultation and he told me don't mess with it. He was like, you have no, I didn't have no, no, um, no complications, no issues. I don't currently have no health problems. So he was like, leave it alone. He was like, most, you know, most women come to want to get it cut off when they have an issue or something going on. So I, I'm just glad that, you know, I didn't keep going back. Cause I think after so many times that you just keep, 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 keep going. That's when you really fucking up yourself. Like it's not just a one session and done. Like no woman has just went from one session that she's done. It is very addicting. Right? Similar to a tattoo. Huh? Is it similar to a tattoo? Is how addictive it is? I want to, yeah, and especially if, if you somebody that, that likes like needles or pain. Like, I, I have a very big tolerance for pain. Like, I used to go get tattoos for no reason. I used to go get um, the little microdermals in my back just because, like, they reject, I go get them put right back in. Like, you know, but it is, is there even a, a shoot, any surgery is addictive. I got my boobs done and instantly was like, damn, I want to go back. I am gonna go back. <laughs> you know, it's I, it's just your first time. You don't really know what you're gonna be like. So your your expectation versus the reality is always different. So that's why I say like, you know, that's how it is. Now you said you um you went to college. Uh, yes, I did. Did you run track in college? I did. I had a lot of scholarship for track. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was your major? My major was business management. <laughs> But um, I had a year, I had my daughter my junior year, the end of my junior year. Mm-hmm. And so I only had a year left. But when I got, I had my daughter, of course, it was very hard mm-hmm. to try to juggle 
being a full time mom and going back to school, especially when you're by yourself. I just had my daughter's father only with me down here. So um, I decided to move back home to get more help and focus on, you know, getting some money <laughs> uh, while he finished up school. And then um, I changed my major to um, it's still business management, but it was a concentration in healthcare because and it's, it's currently what I do now, too. Um, a lot of people like I have a thing about helping people like I've always mm. wanted to be that person to help somebody um, no matter what it is um, I work really well with MRD individ- MRDD individuals mm-hmm. so it's just been a big passion of mine so okay um, another question I forgot to ask do you prefer the term stripper or dancer I prefer the term enter- entertainer entertainer okay because you see what you do is more than... These other females ain't entertainers. Okay, so they're just like uh, either dancers or strippers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, a, to me, a dancer and a stripper are the same thing. Okay. So it's like you're I'm entertaining. Entertainer. You're doing, like, backflips, cartwheels, and the pole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I follow you on Instagram. I see a... Um, we don't have to name drop. We don't want to name drop. We don't do that. But mm-hmm. I see a lot of famous people on your um, post, like in pics. How many blue check marks do you see in your inbox? Um, it's always a lot. Uh, but they be like, um, believe it or not, I, in this life, I, everybody has this idea. I feel like it's so dark in here. Everybody has this idea that it's... Um, you know, these entertainers be like these, you know, certain kind of people are like they're the un, you know. You're looking for the, the rap star, the basketball player. Whatever like that. Like, I'm not, I'm not that female though. Like, I've been there, done that. I've dated um, athletes. I've dated a couple basketball players. I've dated a couple artists. Like, shit, it's an artist that's in my DM. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a basketball player to play for the Nets to stay in my DM and on my phone line every day. Like, will literally come to the city just to see me and he's so cool. But I know he got a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I fucked up. I said where you play for. Anyway, but... <laughs> hey, um, there's but 50, hey, there's 15 dudes on the team. You're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and it's, it's artists shit that that shit this niggas off of love and hip-hop that hit me up be like come to LA you know whatever like that like I'm just not into that um I've never been a money chaser Mm -hmm. I never gave a fuck about what somebody can do for me like it's just my father always instilled in me to you know I grew up spoiled me and my sister we did grow up spoiled as hell like literally I'd be like daddy he'd be like what (laughs) (laughs) you know that simple but um he still taught us to be very independent. Like I know how to tile floor. I know how to drywall, like just certain things like my father taught me. So I've just never been that woman to want to go after or meet a man for nothing because of potentially what he can do for me. Mm-hmm. It's nice to, to date somebody, but these niggas, them athletes and artists not trying to be faithful for real with somebody like me is what I'm gonna say. Mm-hmm. Like they see the, the image of what is put out there to the world and that, that's what they going after. They don't really know who I am. Like, you know, Taylor, not my real name. It's not my real personality. That's my alter ego. Like anybody that knows me for real would say she's so shy. She's so quiet. She a homebody. She keeps to herself completely night and day. Like that's just how I am. Yeah. Like I'm, I'd have been flown out for thousands of dollars. Like I'm just not interested in that. Should I had a, a dude that played basketball one day, he see me in the club. Don't say the team. I didn't even don't know who team. he was. Don't say the team. Huh? Don't say the team. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> but I was at the club and um, his people see me and um, they told the people to come get me to bring me upstairs. Um, And I didn't know who he was. He was like, oh, you don't know me? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I don't know if it made him mad or turned him on to the fact that I didn't know who he was. But literally the rest of the when I say for two hours, this man did not make let me leave. He mm. basically threw everything and then some on me, like, and made sure nobody else touched me or was around me. Like, and we kicked it a few times after that or whatever like that. But I, say, I, I think people are more 
drawn to you when you're not that female that you know oh Thirsty. god it's an athlete let me yeah, yeah like those those people like that's like that i just i'm not like that you're a regular person to me just a little bit more money that's it <laughs> yeah um now I've, I've dated a few strippers there's a lot of strippers mm-hmm. i won't lie there's a lot of strippers <laughs> so um quote we're going to say quote unquote date and they always mm-hmm. had this thing they was like well um yeah, you know, I ain't never dated a lame dude. So in my mind, a lame is like a lame. But they had to break it down for me like a lame was a motherfucker who wasn't a rapper, scammer, drug dealer, mm-hmm. basically a non-famous motherfucker who works every day. And I was like, well, damn, that's a fucking lame. So what's your take on what we just described as lame, like a working motherfucker as opposed, as opposed to um, what we call famous? Um. True, and I, and I, I put famous dudes, I put scammers, drug dealers, all y'all in the same category, honestly. Um, <laughs> okay, we all lames. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, not. I, mean, I put all all them in the same category. Like a regular, I, I call them my nine to five. I don't call them lames. I call them nine to fives. So, um, I love a nine to five nigga. Mm-hmm. To be honest. Now, when I first started dancing and shit like that, like my daughter's father, he a, he a college boy, degree, mm-hmm. fraternity, all that shit. That that was my lane in college. Yeah. You know, got to stripping and it exposed me to everything else. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was a good girl. I didn't I didn't like you would have never thought I would have been doing this ever. <laughs> but um, but I literally I've dated my I've dated like I said rappers artists the street nigga all that shit mm-hmm. it ain't no fun in it for me like i love a nine to five nigga i know what you got going on you know but you you just can't be a regular nine to five nigga don't be no i'm working at mcdonald's nine to five nigga like you gotta be on some on your shit type okay. of nine to five nigga, like, type. yeah like have some goals for you yourself or whatever like that because i've been a brewer winner in, in a couple of relationships mm-hmm. and it's cool when y'all you know, but I, I still need that person that when shit go left, you got my back. You mm. know what I mean? So, but I don't, that term lame, that's funny. I never heard that before. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it pissed me off a bit. Like, what the fuck? Like... <laughs> or regular niggas. Because dudes are done my DM like, you don't ne- you wouldn't date a regular nigga. I said, what's a regular nigga? Like, I date regular dudes all the time. I prefer a regular dude. <laughs> I was about to ask this. So, your preference is like just a regular dude instead of like a pitching motherfucker. Dudes. Yeah. Cause I like I said I've been there, done that. Like I've been cheated on, I've been, you know, and and I feel women be so stuck in because you make this money or you look like this, a nigga ain't gonna do you dirty. I don't care what you what you look like or what you got going on, they still do you dirty. So I've been there, done that. <laughs> now your relationship for um nine to five dudes, have you found those relationships to be a little difficult? Because sometimes it's hard um, for a dude to deal with the fact that like someone else has seen this girl naked, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it just takes that right person. Like currently, I do deal. I do date somebody currently, and we've been kicking it for I want to say a little over three years. We had our ups and downs, but three years a little more than good. kicking it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but um, okay, we're, we're exclusive. Let me say that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but we both had to make that choice to get to this point because mm-hmm. it took a lot to get there where as you know i was still in a place where i was traveling a lot so i wasn't trusting him he wasn't trusting me mm-hmm. but he 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 wasn't a strip club do, a strip club do either he met me when i was bartending so okay. when i wasn't dancing i was bartending and that's how he met me so he had never seen me dance before like ever until i had invited him to one of my shows but um he now is in this place where we're so open with each other. Like, if I go, if I want to go do a scene, I say, "Hey, babe, you know what you think about this?" Or I got a party, party, you know, coming up. I'm about to leave here. Like, we're so open with everything now. Like, it just, it just makes it, you know, great. Like he does, he do have his moments where, you know, he'll be like, "Well, what'd you do? I didn't hear from you at this time when you was in Miami or whatever like that." And it's cute, but it's annoying too. Um, but we're, we're in a good place. And I think that men who, who meet women like us, 
Like mm-hmm. the first thing they want to do is after you date her for a while and you like, damn, I, this chick, you know, I really fuck with her. I like her. They want to change us. Like mm-hmm. I've had my share of that too. Like you need to stop dancing. Like my dude did give me an ultimatum, not an ultimatum, a deadline. So I didn't put it out there yet to people. Um, a few of my close friends do know that I gave myself a deadline of uh, March. I'm going to be done with dancing completely. March of this so, year? Yes. Mm-hmm. Y'all hear that? March. Book now. <laughs> Basically, my birthday's um in two weeks too. So like, I normally do like a little tour. I try to hit a few cities just to get everything done. But um, his birthday's in March, and I that's when I told him I'd be done. So that's his birthday you know, gift. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> but uh-huh. I mean, and I feel like it's it's time too. Like it even with models and dancers, like you're only you only have this name and this this. The mo- make the money you make um, for so long. I just think I've been grateful to constantly be evolving after after all these years. Because I mean, I know girls that was dancing before me trying to get names myself, and now they ain't doing shit. You know what I mean? So, like, I feel like I've done a lot in this time, like as far as shows and um, you know, porn scenes and magazines, you know, videos, shit like that. I feel like I've done a lot. And the money I've made, like I've definitely invested in stocks and put towards my current business that I'm about to um I'm about to drop the website in a couple of weeks so people can know what's going on, what I've been working on. But um, you know, like I said, like it's just it was different. <laughs> and um I just tell one of my friends because she danced for like I'm not gonna say the age she started dancing because I don't need the fear it's knocking on my door. But um <laughs> She was dancing a long time. And I told her one time, like, you know, she was like just spending the money. As the money came in, she was spending it. And I was like, you ever thought about saving? She was like, for what? I can just make some more. And I, I had to put it in perspective for like, you know, it's a new bad motherfucker turning 18 every day who's trying to step in this club. And like, you know how niggas are. They want to see what's new. And I'm like, even though you might be a performer, you might have your regulars and stuff like there's a new girl coming in. Although she might not know the game like you. She might not have as much talent as you. She's new though, you know, right. and that's something you got to deal with. So a lot of dancers do think, you know, fuck it. I get the money as I get it. Worry about investment later. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's something I think I, if I, if somebody would have told me that like years, years, years ago, mm. like I think the thing that, that taught me that was I used to work at this club and we, when I say we was making Two to three thousand every week, every day, mm-hmm. every weekend. I mean, they was only open Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But you, I mean, a nice nine to three, nine to ten thousand on a weekend, not bad. Not but, at all. You know, literally, <clears throat> we was blowing it. Like shit, we was making it. We was blowing it. But what took me to be like, damn, this could be going tomorrow, was one night. Um, it was an altercation in the club. Some dudes came back and shot the whole spot up. The club mm-hmm. didn't open back up. So for females that wasn't saving or, you know, shit like that, it was like, damn, this could be it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in your own city when you don't have clubs that you really can work in or whatever like that. So when Paradise opened back up, like this was two or three years after that shit happened, I really had only been doing bookings, like only dancing out of town. I wasn't doing no in city. Um, regular, you couldn't find me at a regular spot. But once I started working back at the other club, I was like, everything that I was making, it went straight to savings. Mm. Everything, like didn't touch it unless I needed to. Like, you know, I did buy me a Range Rover, but <laughs> it, you had to blow something. You know, that's on you. I, you know, right? <laughs> I had to do something. But, um, but yeah, like that's what I, I, that aspect. I wish I would have learned very, very early. Like you know, put something away. Um, just because you make it, don't mean you got to spend it. That's that's you know, of course, the mentality when you get money like that. But, mm. Now, when it comes to um your favorite cities to dance in, do you have a particular city you like more? Um, I love going to Toronto. Toronto just show you so much love. Like, mm-hmm. um, anybody that's been. And they're probably saying the same thing, like respect and regard that they have for you when you come out there is just like amazing. The hospitality, all that. Um, if I could live in Toronto, I would, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
that that would be my number one place to go to go dancing. I I prefer like the smaller cities when it comes to you know certain things like because you know them dudes don't you know they travel to get out, but when something comes to your city that's different, they be yeah. ready to blow that bag. <laughs> so so like I done made thousands and thousands inside them small little cities, you know, in Hake Town. Shit, I was in Milwaukee um, not too long ago. Like you know, small little country city. I ain't gonna say country, but. Definitely not no place you want to just be like, oh, I'm going to Milwaukee for the weekend. (laughs) I'm from Chicago and I was here for the all-star game. So it was like, Mm -hmm. it was like a competition from hell between the dancers. Like I felt sorry from the out of town dancers because I don't know if you're familiar with dancers from Chicago, but it's like, they a little fucking grainy. They are. I I haven't had some bookings in Chicago. I won't take another book in Chicago. And, And I'm just being honest. And it's because of the dancers. Like I... I feel like at the end of the day, like respect is respect. Like I, like whether you a new female, an OG, whatever, mm-hmm. like respect the game at the end of the day. You ain't gotta be everybody cup of tea that night. Like, yeah. but if somebody brings somebody to a seat and they paying for them, like be respectful. Like, you know, shoot. And my, my last little book of New Year's Eve, I almost got into a fight um, with a dancer being disrespectful in Milwaukee. That was actually where I was at, mm-hmm. but, um, but yeah, Chicago, like, uh, they got us. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, damn, thanks, you know. <laughs> it, it's like, I love, but what's so crazy is like, I used to come to Chicago every year for my birthday. Me, my mom, my sister, mm. we take a road trip and go shopping and just stay like the weekend. But you won't know, I won't. Yeah, I, I w- and I got people asking me to do bookings in Chicago. I, I won't take it. I just won't. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it was funny because, um, the All Star Week, you know, All Star Weekend, basically, it's All Star Week, basically. Mm-hmm. And I was cracking jokes on Instagram. I was like, to all the out of town dancers, you know, strippers in Chicago ain't made no money since like 2012. Y'all should be careful when y'all come like here. That. Yeah, I see like that. <laughs> I was like, you know, maybe y'all should be a little careful coming up here. Mm-hmm. But you know, I ain't hating on all the Chicago dance. I just don't like a few of y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's like, I'm, and, and see those big events too. Like, I don't take bookings for those big events, like All Star Weekend. Um, None of that. I used to when I was younger, and um, Houston turned. I love Houston too, but Houston turned me off to to those big events. I was at Houston's All Star game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I would rather be in my own city, making a you know a guarantee bag than having to deal with all the bullshit like that big. You know, I mean, I ain't afraid to dance in a place where it's a hundred plus. You know, whatever girls. I'm me. I'm gonna do me no matter what. But it's just the point of the headache ain't worth it. That's how I feel. Now, it's funny you said Toronto because I thought you would have said like Miami, Atlanta, Houston, something mm-hmm. like that. And it's like That's Atlanta is funny. like the mecca of stripping, you know? It is. And when I go to Miami, like niggas be like on my ass. Like, I, but I'm so chill. Like, I don't I don't go there to dance. I go there to, like, I was just in Miami um a week ago, so a week and a half ago. I went right up from New Year's. Um, I was down there. And I went to Tootsie's, and like when I say the dancers was all on my ass, like, and they got you know everything in there is mostly foreign, but yeah. nice, nice, like nice girls. But um, I just I've been booked at KLD out there. I've been booked at the G Five, but I, I've never been booked to dance. I've always just been I've only hosted, never mm-hmm. danced in a single booking I've had in Miami, which is crazy. So oh no, once like when I was like maybe twenty five, I was with Cherokee then. But um, that's the only time I danced in Miami. I think it was at the office mm-hmm. is what it was. But I, I'm just not into like, like I said, I prefer the smaller shit. Like, um, it's it's a lot that be going on, I want to say, in Miami and like Vegas. I, I've been booked in Vegas too, but it's just, I, I go off of energy. For me, somebody like me who's not really outspoken, like I'm the type of you book me like, I, I need to bring somebody with me to get me out of my comfort because I'm so quiet. I stay to myself literally. I'm not that turn up female that, you know, you think that's loud, a running around yeah, all I'm not it. that person. So that's why I don't gravitate towards like Miami and Vegas for like, I got to go dance or I want to go do that. I don't. I want to be someplace where it's more chill, relaxed, <laughs> that type of thing. Now, it's funny you say Miami has like the foreign dance because not to sound racist, but I prefer black dancers. Mm-hmm. Um, the foreign thing, how do I put this? A, a lot of the bad, quote unquote, bad foreign bitches, they grew up being cute little boys. So, mm-hmm. you know, they had a little surgery 
And th- that's I, everybody I was, in there. I want to say, my shit. I, you you don't know what's real or fake in Miami, I right? Mean, and that's, that's <laughs> I'm more of a fan of you know black dancers. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to like strip clubs, do you prefer white clubs, black clubs? Um, I when I'm in my city and I want to just go somewhere and chill and go throw, throw some money with somebody, like I go to a white club, mm-hmm. like or it's majority white. You may find a handful of black girls, but it's majority white because I, I I like that chill vibe. As I said, mm-hmm. I'll turn up in a black strip club in a second, but the vibe is different. Um, now. When we when I when I do go to Miami, like of course that's like I said, you see so many nationalities. But it's the same thing in Toronto. You see so many nationalities, but they black. Mm-hmm. That's why I like Toronto. Like you got Jamaicans, you got Brazilians, but they black. Like yeah. you know, <laughs> and when, even when I went to Tootsie's, like I ain't let a single foreign chick dance me. I said, where the black girls at? <laughs> that's what I want. Like I mean, and you no, know, that's that's something different because. I know a lot of like black dancers and they think they have a preference to be around foreign dancers. Like, well, I don't want to be around a black dancer. I can make more money for foreign dancers. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, nah, I don't know. Or maybe because, you know, I don't have foreign dancer money. I don't know. But <laughs> I think it's the same. <laughs> it's all the same. I just think women got like this idea that if they, you know, surround yourself with who you want to be like or whatever like that but at the end of the day like I got females as foreign I got females as black like for instance my birthday party is coming up I got one of my black I got a black dancer in the front and my friend's Puerto Rican like you the best of niggas like the best of both worlds but me honestly I just prefer like a nice brown skinned chick that's gonna like do her thing like I couldn't I couldn't understand half the shit the girls are saying down there Like, what can we talk about? <laughs> but, um, but I mean, I, I just think that men have this idea now where foreign is like the best thing. Like, at the end of the day, technically, black women are foreign too. Yeah. If you really want to look at it, like, you got some some bad black women, you know, around that I feel like killing these foreign women. Like, everybody killing for our bodies anyway. Shit. Yeah, I, I think the thing is a lot of the, you know dudes like exhibit a lot of feminine traits now. So they want to like they got something new. Like they want to say they got a Louis Vuitton purse or a chick from Brazil or mm-hmm. some other foreign place so they can stunt. Like yeah, you see my chick, she's foreign. Be like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, foreign doesn't always equal better. You know, like a, a Fiat is foreign, but I wouldn't drive that shit. You know, first off, and I not no hate, no whatever, but I didn't see some Puerto Rican and other nationalities once they hit 30 35 Damn. they be looking old they be looking terrible terrible like you it's you know everybody black don't crack yeah. <laughs> we be looking young for a long time and i'm just not and i said no shade just honestly like if you look at these women and and when i say like no botox no fillers no none of that shit if they just natural like they be looking old like you know, it's not it's not a good look to me. Like I don't like that. <laughs> like, y'all like they like them young, 21, 25, you know, foreigners. Let me see you when one is 30 and up. They had yeah, no work done. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, when it comes to strip club um interaction, I noticed that a lot of dudes who work in strip club, they exhibit like feminine ass tendencies. I don't mean like homosexual, but like they're catty. Mm-hmm. Um, real like just they bitches. You know, I don't know how else to say it. But um, yeah. do you have like have you ever had any problem with the males at the strip clubs you work at? As far as, as the a men? customer, or like somebody that works the men who work there. Um, I just think that when people get in a position, especially like a strip club, they get like on this high horse where they feel like um they the be all, say it all, whatever like that when it comes to the strip clubs. I mean, even up here, like you have men and like they attitudes be, be like shitty as hell when it comes to how they run their business or their females. Like they feel like they can talk to me the kind of way because they feel like as a strip club need dancers yeah. at the end of the day. No one's coming so, there to see the DJ. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, so it's like they they feel like, oh, well, she need this spot. Like you know, so they feel like they just want to say and, and do anything to you, like, oh, and I mean, it's fucked up, I, I I will say that, like, 
if you ain't got the owner that's trying to fuck everybody, you got the owner that feel like he could talk to you any kind of way. Like, mm. it is what it is. Um, that's why I say, like, I really literally tunnel vision when I be in a club. <laughs> so you treat it, like, straight up like a business. Yeah, like I said, like, I clock in, clock out. Don't talk to me about shit. Strip it after I leave. Don't bring it home to me. None of that stuff. Like, I don't want to hear about shit. I don't want to mingle with y'all. I don't want to do none of that. Like, oh. I am. What about interaction with the dancers? Because on I if I didn't know there were like fights between strippers in the dressing room. I didn't know that. I didn't know there were strippers who yeah. go in the locker room and steal. Like but this, this it, shit was all new to me. It's people females steal, females, um, females that do hang together, you have outside drama that you bring into the club, like who fucking who customer or who mm-hmm. this, this, and this. Like it's always gonna be something going on in a strip club. And unfortunately, like it's it's like an everyday thing. You you won't you rarely go into a, a space where everybody just don't want to court. Like the club I work at, it was fights all the time, but we had each other back. But mm-hmm. it's it was hella fights. You know, somebody got a pimp or somebody, you know, whatever. It's yeah. <laughs> it it and it it's, it sucks because like you know sometimes it'll happen on the floor and niggas just, you, you sitting there fighting on the main floor in front of customers and you know how they look for yourself. It's just certain things I just really wish you know, would, would just think about as a woman. Like, why? Just why, why, why are you still looking like that? <laughs> well, have you ever had a strip club stalker, like a male from Players Club? Um, no, I've never had nobody follow me. I watch everything I do. <laughs> but, but you've had a dude who told you he was going to take you out of there and change your life, and you don't have to do yeah, that. I mean, I've heard, I've heard some of everything. Like I've, I've been. There ain't nothing I haven't heard. <laughs> but I just think that, like the the thing now is social media. The men they just be so blunt and so aggressive, like on on these so on these sites and i get i post what i post and shit like that but don't jump in my dm and show me your dick don't jump in my dm like <laughs> oh let me send you a thousand dollars so i can facetime you or let me do this like you you just want to get a reaction out of me at least 90 percent of the dudes that be like hey let me pay you or let me send you some money or show me pictures of money that they got like that shit is so corny to me like mm-hmm. i just don't get it <laughs> Do you believe that social media has made a lot of these dudes more bold? Where they, it's easy to type some shit and say, oh, yeah. but you know, definitely. like they'll probably never come in your face and say some shit. Oh no, definitely, yeah, I de- definitely, definitely, definitely agree with it. Because they can't get to you. Like you could say anything. You could be the boldest person, you know, behind your computer screen or your phone. <laughs> that don't mean you're gonna do nothing. That's why I said, like half the time, like I just, I just delete out all my DMs today. I had so many, like. I don't even read them. Like it just be it just be a bunch of bullshit. And I that's like the way the turn that social media has taken for anybody is just like they feel like they have the right. Even with females, when they feel like they want to say something smart on my page or say something about my body or whatever like that, like shoot, it, I pay it no mind. Thank you. Easily can delete it. So do you have? Do you get more like? <laughs> so when it comes to like the comments, because I, I see your post, I see. People say some weird fucked up shit on your post. Um, mm-hmm. But do you get more fucked up posts from women or men? Um, I, as of lately, I don't, I haven't been getting too many fucked up posts. Like I used to get a lot from women that used to be like, oh, well her ass is fake or her this is that. Or like, and they don't, you don't even follow me. Like you just want to comment just to comment. Mm-hmm. Like, but I feel like when I started being more transparent on social media, that's when that shit stopped because you just assume you don't know what I had done. You don't know me for shit. You know what I mean? (laughs) But um, as far as me and I, I just get the whole thing. Let me come home to you. Let me do this. I just think it's funny. It's fun to me. Like it's cute, but I get that. Like don't send your dick to her inbox. She deleted anyway. (laughs) Please don't. I don't at all. So have you I already had, know like, what it is. You know, Instagram, they blur it now. So I already know what it is. If it's a blur picture, I know what you sent me. <laughs> I'm not going to open it. So um, when it comes to the men, I know sometimes dudes can get overly aggressive. Have you ha- ever had any situations where you were dancing and the guy got too aggressive with you? Um, no, I haven't. 
Um, mm. I'm not I'm not really a lap dance person. Anybody mm-hmm. tell you that? I I prefer not to be a lap dancer. Um, I prefer to, to dance on stage. Um, but um, I mean, I've been in my situation where like, you know, somebody was either a male was at the stage just doing too much. I might have kicked them or whatever <laughs> on purpose. But like, that's it. Just know your distance. <laughs> Hang on. Have you ever had a guy try to take his money back off stage? Uh uh-uh. uh. No, every club I worked in, we didn't always have security or like okay. people who watch the stage like that. So that's why I say, like, I wasn't working nowhere that didn't have like what I needed, you know, or whatever. So, so you make it a point to dance at a place where you feel secure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, what's your take on porn versus dancing or entertaining? My take, what you mean, my take on it? Uh, how do you compare the two? They don't compare. They don't compare? <laughs> oh, okay. No, they don't. Just because you're a stripper don't mean that's, that's what you, you sure. want to go into that lifestyle. Um, I never thought about going into that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It just so happened that for me working at a club, that's who that club was booking all the time, porn stars. Mm-hmm. So when they see me, they were on my ass instantly. Mm-hmm. And it took a while for me to get to that point of saying yes to a scene. But I, I don't feel like they go hand in hand. You got a bunch of regular women who, you know, they into porn or, you know, anybody could be into porn. Don't mean you a stripper or yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, just because you're a stripper don't mean you want to go into porn. But I don't think there's anything wrong with, I mean, the only the only way I would say it compares as, a, as what the two could say they compare is you really got to be in a place where you're free and open and know yourself and you don't care about judgment and you just, you know, shit like that. Like, you can't be somebody that's like, you got reservations about what people are going to think or how people are going to feel. Same thing with tripping. Like, my mom, um, my mom's very in the church. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even want to say what position she holds in the church, but she's very in the church. <laughs> and um, I used to do Bible study all the time. Like, and even in college, you couldn't catch me on a week without me doing a Bible study. I, you know, I was that much into church. That's why I say, like, you would never believe this is the life I have now. <laughs> but, um, like, you, oh, shit, where was I going with this? Hold on, I'm sorry. But my point is that people, you know, they see, like, porn or whatever like that, and they have this idea. It's so, it's so fake for me. My mom, when she found out I did my scene, like, she literally was like, I'm gonna take your daughter from you. That's Damn. what my mom did. <laughs> and you know, I was just like, it hurt my heart just because we had that sit down and I had to have that talk with her. Because you, you know, what you do affects the people around you. Mm-hmm. But never would I have thought my mom would come to me and say, Oh, I'm gonna take your child from you, or whatever like that. She couldn't. I mean, I lived on my own, was making my own money, like. So what, how I was making my money or whatever like that. But it did put that like thought in my head of, let me chill on that. You know, I did one scene and then I didn't, I didn't go back to it for years <laughs> or whatever, because like I, I was in a place where my first time I did it, I did it for the wrong reasons. So that's why I say like, that's why they compare where you got to do it for the right reasons and be all the way secure and confident and okay with the choices and the decisions behind it. When I first did it, I did it for a man because he was so into porn and I kept getting asked and he, at the time I was with somebody that was, that's all they should. He lay next to me watching porn. That's how much he would watch porn. <laughs> I, I just, I, you, I never had watched it before and knew nothing about it until we started having these girls come to the club. But that's why I say like, you got to do it for the right reason, the right time. When I did it later on, years later, I did it for me. And because I knew I was in a place that you know, I could deal with the aftermath or, you know, I didn't give a fuck what nobody said about, you know, who's seen whatever. You know what I mean? Females got fucking sex videos out and they just ain't get paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Different is I got paid for mine. That's it. <laughs> so a lot of people have this perception that if you dance or if you've ever done porn, you're like a nympho 24-7. You're walking around just like a dog and heat or something 24-7. Um, if you just let them know, like, is it like that's untrue, right? No, that's this. I mean, I think that I, I think I have a, a very high 
sex drive, but like, um, it used to be so bad when I first started dancing. Like, I couldn't dance and not be turned on. Like, that's how bad it was. But after dance for so long, that that subsides. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it takes a little more. But I like the whole porn thing is so is people don't understand until you've actually done it to know like the fakeness and the it's not like a natural it's not natural it's just like it's a stop let me see this let me do this let me do that let me let me get you like this now wait you lay like this no you have her like this like it's not a turn on (laughs) i was told that like a 20 minute scene could take like six seven hours to film yeah you'd be there all day yes you could be on set all day like literally for that um um it's it's literally and and it's a it's a it's a couple day process because you remember you got to get tested the test you wait for your results to come back once your results come back they want to shoot as much as possible like as early as possible like you know it's it's a lot to it but women I, just because you're you're a dancer or into porn don't mean you want to have sex all the time. Now I will say it's some porn stars that just I didn't you know they be fucking like doing <laughs> the scene every day. A couple people, you ain't gonna catch me doing no shit like that. Like I only time where my sex drive is bad is when say it's like I haven't had sex due to like being out of town or mm-hmm. it's that time of the month. Um or right before that time of the month, like I get like this urge to want to fuck all the time, all day. <laughs> and if, if I haven't, it's just bad. <laughs> so that's the only time where it's like on my mind or say if you've been with somebody and let's say a man, for instance, and he just don't last and he come before you. Mm-hmm. That's a problem for me because <laughs> I want to go again. <laughs> that's the only time where it's real bad. But that's it. Okay. So, um, I don't want to dwell on the porn too much, <laughs> but it's like, um, do you get to pick the people you work with or mm-hmm. is it just like, Hey, this is the person you're working with for the day? Not at all. You have to, they pick who you, they want you to shoot with. Like they pick the scene, they pick the storyline. It's all that. Like my last scene earlier this year, I mean, earlier last year, like summer last year, everybody was like, why'd you shoot with that old guy? I didn't even know I was shooting with him. It's like I picked her from the airport. Like literally, that's when I found out. <laughs> and I learned the storyline the next day. Like it, you have no choice, but they have these visions and idea in their head about what people, mm. you know, want to see or, you know, shit like that. My my first scene, I was gonna shoot with a white guy. I had actually, um, and the guy was on set and everything. He was cool as fuck, but he wanted to shoot without a condom. Mm-hmm. I wasn't cool with that because at that time it was so much in the air about testing and you know mm-hmm. all that shit at the time. I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about. But oh yeah, I remember when they shut down um California from shooting for a while. Yeah. yeah. But um so I just wasn't in a place and he was like, What well, the only way because you know some men they can't get hard off a condom. Mm-hmm. I get it after fucking for a for so long whatever <laughs> but I just wasn't comfortable with it so that's how I ended up shooting with with Rico and that's the one thing that I feel like still comes to me like every time that I shoot with Rico like people don't even understand the logistics behind that shoot with Rico like it's not something I want to do like he's a great guy but at the time me and him were not in a good space we had just had a falling out so mm-hmm. here I am now I gotta shoot with you after we just got into a full argument, like so you were actually beefing shit. with your co-star. Yeah, we were beefing before that scene. So I feel like he took that opportunity to like try to take advantage, you know, because he was like really aggressive with me in that scene. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't want to shoot with him, but I had no choice because he was the only one in LA at the time. So it was what it was, but you know, whatever. <laughs> So it's like um, moving forward, would you rather shoot scenes or be a producer of your own stuff? Um, I would be. I would produce porn. I would. Mm-hmm. I like. I like. Over the years, I've I've become more in tune with myself, my sexual side, and like I've even wanted to put dancers on to like out of town bookings and and doing 
scenes, even the only fans like I've wanted to put females on, like I have so many things that be going to my head. Like even with my dude, like when we when we post to my only fans, like and he he be so into it too. He'll be like, "Hey, let's let's put the camera like this. Let's do like I be into that <laughs> shit." Like, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying, it's good to have a partner that you know y'all be on the same page and y'all can relate to that. You know what I mean? Like, that's um, funny you bring up OnlyFans. Do you believe OnlyFans should like cut out the middleman when it comes to porn production? Um, it's like it basically like straight from your your iPhone to the website now. But I mean, you can have sites that do the same thing. You know, these sites they pay for memberships too. If you got your own, I mean, I got a I got a website too that I. Um, Taylor Jones XOXO.com, but it takes you to my OnlyFans. You could see pictures and videos of me on my website too. But if you want to see the real stuff, you got to go to OnlyFans. <laughs> but I just feel like most people don't want to put the work in to have their own site because you know you gotta, it's that extra money. Um, you cutting out the middle person doing, I mean, should they just, only when OnlyFans was created, it wasn't really created for our industry. It was created for other shit. We just took advantage of it. <laughs> so, so it is what it is. <laughs> um, when it comes to the COVID nineteen shutdown, how did that affect um dancers? Um, it affects them a lot because, uh, as I said, we we had of course up here, um, we had uh, um. Our clubs, of course, get shut down. Even even now, our clubs aren't shut down, but they got a ten o'clock curfew. Who comes to a strip club before ten o'clock nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> but it definitely affected a lot of people's money. Um, a lot of females, of course, was doing that PUA stuff. You know, kudos to them for that. But <laughs> at the end of the day, like um, COVID, as far as dancers, it just made you. If you didn't have another source of income, like it definitely hurt you. Is what I'll say. But somebody like me, I've always had a second source of income. I'm getting in my car, just so you know. Okay. So um, when you perform now, like, do you wear a mask? Yeah, we're still required to wear a mask at all times. But if I'm doing, like, a private party, mm -hmm. um, I don't tend to wear a mask unless it's, like, a, a bigger venue where mm -hmm. it's a private venue. I don't do that. Okay. Got any closing words you'd like to tell everyone? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Yeah. Um, no. Um, I, I mean, I would say be tuned for what's to come. I, if you, I mean, if you still want to now. Hold on, you're cutting out just a little bit. People to feel like this is all me, like that's all I do. Um, like I said, I, I have a whole other life. Um, I just want people to, to just stay tuned for what's to come from me and you know, things like that. Support me in everything and all my endeavors. That's it. <laughs> all right, and how can the people reach you? Um, either I mean, follow me, of course, on all my social media sites, Taylor Jones, XOXO on all platforms. Um, that's Snapchat. Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook, also um, website TaylorJonesXOXO.com. Um, email modellovejones at gmail.com. I answer all things in email. <laughs> yeah, she does. So if you try to book me something, do not damn me. <laughs> all right. Thank you for the interview. This has been Logoon's podcast. You can reach us at logoon.info. That's L A W G O O N dot I N F O. And on Instagram at J-U-R-I-S-D-O-C-T-O-R-G-O-O-E.